Um, now, also about climate change, uh, a bloke who you've never heard of, who has bought his way effectively into the uh, Democratic primary race, is a guy by the name of Tom St uh, Steyer. He's a rich bloke who uh, has essentially won his way through with a whole collection of, uh, of ads. Anyway, in Iowa, he's about to uh, meet the cold reality that uh, no one wants him to be the Democrat nominee. He wants climate change as policy one, two, three and four. He says that it is, uh, that's basically his entire candidacy. And our own Annalise Nielsen had the chance to ask him a couple of questions and unsurprisingly he decided to have a whack at our Prime Minister. Well, it turns out, Annalisa, that I know how to read and I know what's been going on in Australia and I think he should eat his words because Australia is actually the example of what we need to avoid. And I think the Australian people, I would go over to the Australian people and talk about what it is we need to do together because that's an attitude that has to change. We do only contribute about 1.3% of the world's emissions. America's much worse. Why should we be giving up so much when America could do much more with much less? Well, let me put it to you this way. That's why I'm going to declare a state of emergency on day one and change what America does. Because when I want to go to Australia, I want to make sure that we're treating it as an emergency, that we're actually solving the problem here, so that when we talk to people in Australia, we can ask them to solve it with us. Uh, now, it's been pointed out to a few people uh, 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 that uh, Tom Steyer has an interesting uh, investment history in Australia, where apparently coal at one point was part of his portfolio. But shh, don't tell anyone. Um, Campbell, a message back to the bloke that you've never heard of that no one will remember. Oh, see you later, ignorant blowhard. I mean, thanks for the <laughs> gratuitous advice. Um, and maybe you get your facts straight next time. Uh, rude letter to follow. <laughs> now, Nicholas, um, what's fascinating, and this is where we sort of transition into a bit more general American political chat, right, is that uh, we know that it's uh, basically Sanders, uh, Sanders is surging in those first couple of states. He's, uh, he looks like the sort of uber lefties are all starting to coalesce around him. But interestingly, um, Beto O'Rourke originally was sort of a climate change or bust uh, politician. There have been a few that have gone through this process, but the Democrats haven't uh, coalesced around them. What does that tell you about the climate change or bust um, way of winning over support in centre-left uh, mainstream political parties that uh, if that's what you're all about, they're not going to put their arms around you? Yeah, well, I mean, winning a US election requires you to build a coalition of support across uh, a huge geographic area in uh, a diverse range of communities. And if you're a one-trick pony and all you've got is climate change, then, um, yeah, you're just not going to be able to build that coalition of support, as that, <laughs> as that fellow who was on that vanity project there, happily burning his money, but probably liking the fact that he's getting that, that profile, and even people from Australia want to talk to him, uh, they, can, they can go on, on like that. Um, look, how this Democrat race plays out, I, I really don't know. Um, you are right in your analysis about Sanders, seems to be... Uh, building up ahead of steam yet, but who knows? You know, the moderates could coalesce around uh, Pete Buttigieg, and and you know, it, 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 I, I still don't know, and I don't think anyone can confidently predict which way it's going to go. All right, let's uh, let's talk about impeachment and where that goes before uh, we talk more generally about uh, American politics. So I want to show you. Remember that silver bullet, John Bolton, former National Security Adviser, the one who, uh, well, the softies uh, like Mitt Romney who were all out to put the shiv into the bloke who didn't make him uh, Secretary of State. Remember, he was uh, shit-canning him before the election and then having candlelight dinners with him after the election to try to get the, uh, chief, uh, the, 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 uh, the chief diplomat's role. Didn't get it. Uh, ended up uh, uh, pouring his money into uh, Utah, using his Mormon links, becoming the, uh, the senator there, of course, with the Republican infrastructure, and now he uh, wants to become sort of the the lefty lovey, the reach out man, the you know 2.0 version of a John McCain without any of the uh, the National Security Service record that he's had. Anyway, he's been trying to get uh, himself and three others to vote for John Bolton to give evidence. Now, this was all when someone somewhere uh, at the 11th hour, just like all of these silver bullets, went off to suggest that to John Bolton, he's going to come in here and he's going to say there was a quid pro quo. He's going to say that this was not about uh, corruption. This was all about politics. The only problem is somebody found these quotes from when he was actually the person who was uh, advising the president about Ukraine, talking about Ukraine to European television and he talks about the president's priorities and the nature of the phone call that he wants to testify about. Roll it. I will be meeting President Zelensky. Uh, he and President Trump have already spoken twice. Uh, 
uh, president called to congratulate President Zelensky on his election and then on his success in the parliamentary election. They were very warm and cordial calls. Uh, we're hoping that uh, they'll be able to meet in Warsaw and have a few minutes together. Uh, he goes on to, and this is a really important thing that I wanted to show here too, was uh, him talking about the list of priorities where among those priorities were, among other things, corruption. Sorry, Nicholas. Oh, he hasn't worked out. He's, he did no response. No response. This bloke at the start of the week was going to be the golden save. No, no, you had your shot. Bronwyn, what do you think about this and this tape where he goes on and talks about uh, corruption? He says, phone call was fine, not once, not but twice. And one of the things they talked about was fighting corruption. Exactly the point of the whole thing. That's exactly the point. And in how many uh, instances in this country do we talk about the importance of not doing business uh, with corruption, uh, corrupt governments and so on? And what about all that weak business we went on here? It was the same issue. Correct. So uh, what Trump did in saying he was not going to deal with a corrupt government was perfectly valid. So, and there's Mr Bolton uh, just uh, confirming it all. So I, I think you're right. I, th I think um, the uh, vote will take place on Saturday and that will get rid of it and it'll be... Off go, and Trump will be re-elected. Because, as I've said all the way through here, Nicholas, the calculation wasn't removing him as president. It was about putting pressure on half a dozen senators in purple states to say, don't elect this person, they let Trump off the hook. This is all about trying to get to a majority in the Senate. Yes, it is. Well, yes, it well is. no, I disagree with that. I mean, I think there are... Basic Just an accident, they'll, they'll cut ads? Of, ...and standards which the US political system needs to uphold and any well, person of average intelligence listening oh, to or reading the transcript of the tape between now I'm Trump dumb, and the Ukrainian president would see what Trump was proposing was clearly corrupt I didn't and, know you were a clear and deserving boy. of Nicholas? impeachment. And, so, and, 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 what uh, did, and so when Biden was talking about a billion dollars that were held up in exchange for the get rid of a prosecutor, was that behaviour that, that, that well, was acceptable? I'm, I'm not talking about Joe Biden. Oh, no, of course we're not. No, of course. The state <laughs> and what he clearly said. But, as we, but you want to know but the political like realities it, here? The fact is Donald, Donald Trump could shoot a man in, in Times Square and Mitch McConnell ain't going to allow uh, that Senate to uh, impeach Trump. So we all because know that, that this is, is at the end of the day political that is utterly theater. outrageous. Um, well, it wasn't theater put on by the Republicans. It was Reading what he said would know what he did was absolutely corrupt. OK, so, Campbell, I'm both dumb and I don't understand how statecraft works, but when the Democrats do it, um, well, whatever, you know, no impeachment there. Yeah, well, look, um, I mean, we've seen plenty of that double standard the whole way through this tawdry uh, saga and I, I guess I just keep leaping beyond all this and what's really going to happen and you just were talking about the, the Democrat sort of... Uh, uh, race, and they're just, they've just got a field of lunatic lefties who oh. aren't going to appeal to, to a broad coalition, as Nicholas rightly pointed out. And at the end of the day, in, at the end of this year, Trump will prevail. And yeah, gosh, he might even do better than he did last time with this bunch of crazies that, that, are, that are vying for for the uh, for the leadership. And by the way, I mean, just think about it. Just you know, these states, they have to win. They're not interested in the climate change nonsense. They want those jobs in manufacturing, heavy industries, and Trump's bringing it all back. That's what's going to matter. But the important thing is uh, to realise is that, just as I've said here again and again, there's one rule for socialists and one rule for everybody else. It's applying now in the United States, where the Democrats have gone so far to the left uh, that they are now part of that socialist thinking um, and they have one rule for them and another rule for everybody else. They simply want to declare the, the 2016 election um, invalid. They want to pretend it never happened, that Trump was never elected. And they're just not, never going to give up on that concept and they've done everything they possibly can to try and uh, get the, uh, the FBI to uh, uh, besmirch uh, Trump in mm. the way that they did. The Department of Justice is not coming out looking pretty. And again and again, when you see uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, the uh, leader of, of the prosecutors, I beg your pardon, the prosecutor in the Senate, uh, simply saying again and again what are lies, you just realise mm. that 
uh, at the end of the day, there'll be a vote on Saturday, and then we'll get on with, or they'll get on with their business.